Today we are continuing working on the party pad and I'm gonna show you how I turned this foundation that I found underneath the shed that I demoed into an outdoor barbecue dining area. The shed that Lindsay, Jess, and myself toppled over a couple episodes ago actually had a mini foundation. We are just pouring a tiny baby extension to it that fits the barbecue so we can have some space on the existing foundation for a couple of seats for a dining area. I am basing level off of the foundation that's already existing, so it was really easy to just take some metal stakes and a small level and go around and make sure that everything was square before pouring in some concrete in the heat of the day that definitely didn't make any sense, and I tried to save it and just look at me go, what is even happening? The solution, my friends, is just cover it up. It's just a foundation. I definitely should have added rebar, potentially, maybe, I'm not sure, but definitely add rebar when you do foundations. I have a whole foundation episode when I poured one for a jacuzzi. Allie and I just mixed up some concrete and poured the rest up until it was nice and level and moved on to creating the base out of an old tree trunk here on my property to be yeah, the base of just a beautiful reclaimed lumber dining table. Oh my God, that literally couldn't have gone more perfectly. Allie and I just sat around for a bit and just ensured that we liked the placement of the trunk and just kind of agreed that it is the perfect placement with the perfect chairs for the perfect patio and moved forward by securing it in with some concrete, you know, cause we don't want this thing toppling over. I love how excited Allie gets during projects because it just keeps me like oodling and being proud of the project that I'm doing rather than getting deflated. So love you, Allie. We let the concrete sit overnight and in this heat, it for sure dried on through. We removed the mold, which is really easy and placed the barbecue and it fit perfectly. And you can tell that we were just super stoked on our win here. I trimmed out the side pieces of wood that used to be covered with a larger piece of wood. So just to make it look a little bit better and the makeover that you see to the left, that pool with the duck floating. Oh, that episode has been live. You need to go check it out. To add some shade because the sun does set directly where we opened up that wall, I decided to do some pipe and flange, which I will be using three flanges, three, the smallest nipples that you can find, two 90 degree elbows and one T. And you can do the pipe size of your choice. I had to do three quarters on the top and later find out I need to do a half inch on the bottom but I digress. I wanted to do a top and bottom for here because the wind is just so vicious and I've seen friends' houses with outdoor linens like this and they just look thrashed and terrible. So this is just my due diligence to create two drape rods custom size to cover this entire open space. Little fun fact for you, the last couple DIYs that we just went through together, there was a fail in every single one. So the plan that I initially had for the day didn't come to fruition. I needed a win. So I grabbed my angle grinder. I picked up this old drum on my property, cut it in half, turn it into some planters for some plants I can't put into the ground currently and just do a little decorative moment to give myself a win. I want to take a quick second to tell you guys about today's sponsor, our family over at HelloFresh. If you guys don't know, I've been working with HelloFresh for about two years now and they single-handedly got me into cooking. HelloFresh is delivered right to your door and it really is not just for dinner. I feel like sometimes you get that vibe, but you can shop HelloFresh Market for quick breakfasts, wholesome snacks, and even desserts. You'll find everything to satisfy your cravings without stepping foot into a grocery store. There really is nothing that I love more than saving time and HelloFresh really works with my schedule and it's gonna work with yours. Your plans are flexible and you can change your meal preferences, update your delivery day, and even change your address with just a few taps on the HelloFresh app. How HelloFresh has come in clutch with me lately is honestly lunches for me and my assistants in the middle of the day. When I don't know what to do, I just turn into the fridge, grab and cook for them. If you guys wanna give HelloFresh a go, you can go to hellofresh.com and use code MET16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. You heard me right, folks. You can go to HelloFresh.com and use my code METS16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. The link is down in the description box and in the pinned comment. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's episode. Let's get right back into the DIY. I built a very basic frame out of scrap two by fours that is about three feet by eight feet long. So the table is pretty large. I'm using four inch screws to secure it and level it into the trunk as much as humanly possible because I want this floating as much as we can. We will be killing two birds with one stone right here. So because the table does need some sort of support to the left, since the majority of the weight is on that side, I will be DIYing a barbecue wraparound by digging out some holes for some posts and adding some self-leveling concrete to the mix, making sure that every post I'm putting in at every corner is nice and sturdy, specifically that one that is going underneath the table. But that we will just wrap with some cedar fence posts and make it a moment. 
You will see me start to work around the heat wave that hit us. So we are in the sunrise moments, laying some flagstone down on some level sand that I tamped out. It's very easy. I did a whole patio makeover with my dad that goes into the process of leveling the floor, but I didn't get too crazy here. I opted to add the flagstone only to the left-hand side of the table because it was more of an entertaining moment in that corner. So we can add some extra seating or you can just stand when you have FOMO when somebody's barbecuing. I know originally I said this was gonna be a reclaimed lumber table, but I decided to build that frame and then pour some white cement on top, which if you already know that I said cement, you know this is gonna be a fail, but I had to give it a go. My idea was to make the table look thicker than what it actually is and not have to pour all of that concrete to be responsible for so much weight. So I opted to add some hardy backer to the top of the two by four frame since this table will be openly exposed and be getting wet from the weather. After installing the hardy backer board, you go in with a specific water resistant fiber tape and then you add some thin set on top of that and you let that dry before you go in and paint some red guard all over it to just protect it from the moisture. Now, before we go and pour, we need something to pour into. So I grabbed some scrap MDF that I had on hand and I drilled that in nice and securely about a half inch above the hardy backer board. I siliconed with black silicone wherever it looked like it was gonna seep through the frame. That's what you typically do on a cement mold anyways. And I mixed two bags of like custom white countertop mix that I special ordered and it wasn't even close to being enough. I actually mixed the bags wrong in its entirety, even though I read the directions a million times over and set myself up for success. I don't know what happens when you go to like pour something that is wet, at least for me, my brain completely short circuits. So this was the first pour attempt that I wish I had. I needed basically six more bags of this countertop stuff in order for it to completely fill the mold, which just seems a little bit obscene since it's just a half inch thick. I really do think the countertop mix would be ideal, but clearly I couldn't order more and wait. I couldn't just keep stalling the project. I needed to move forward. So that's when I decided to just kind of revisit it with just Portland cement. And I do not recommend this, but I just wanted to see what would happen. Cement is one of the ingredients in concrete. Mr. Modern Builds has done an entire video on it. I will link it down below for you. Ali and Tori helped me out at sunset the following day. And again, I'm not recommending you guys do this with Portland cement this is gonna crack and shrink I already know this I just wanted to see how much and while we were pouring I was getting so excited because it was going fairly well even though there was clumps and grooves I knew that I could figure out a solution I really wasn't expecting to pour so much of this cement I think we poured about three bags 90 pounds each which is a ton more material than I anticipated but I just moved forward because you know that's future Rachel's problem Even though the pour didn't go as planned the first time nor the second time, still I couldn't help but beam because at least we did it and at least we gave it a go. Oh boy, let me tell you, when I woke up the next morning, oh there was a flash flood, yes there was. Insert footage here, baby, so fun. <laughs> So the table that uh, was already gonna be ruined because I didn't do the right way got way more warped and took me about a week to fix on and off again fighting monsoons, which is always fun having a little dance with mother nature. During that week, I really didn't film much because it was all just wrong what I was doing because the weather just came in and kept saying, Rachel, do not do this tabletop right now, my love. So I listened and I just sanded down and then started leveling the table itself underneath the trunk to make it look level and just kind of give up on the fact that it was cracking every which way. I will revisit that tabletop when the weather is consistent. I just moved forward with doing what I could by adding some beautiful wood trim that I found at Home Depot and cut that down to size to kind of, again, make it look larger, like thicker than what it is.
Once I felt secure that the posts were fully dialed into place and could hold the weight of the tabletop that we just poured, that's when I added those cedar fence posts. I actually decided to use Ben Ueda's planer, which made them just look silky smooth, which was a nice addition. You can start to see when you pull back, it is wrapped around the corner and there is a cactus privacy fence because that barbecue, when you're cooking and looking out, you're staring directly at the trailer. So we just wanna ensure that we're preemptively planning for some privacy once this becomes comes, you know, open to the public, hopefully. I glued together three sheets of three quarter inch plywood for a vanity top. So I just cut that down to be a tabletop essentially for the barbecue wrap. That way you can place drinks or utensils or plates if you're cooking. I'm just trying to make it, you know, fun and functional like I always say. Adding details that are actually edible was key here. I feel like just making it a moment because the garden is right there as well. So we have some like passion fruit cactus, we have tomatoes and then different herbs planted above on that bar that we DIY'd. And even though we're adding new landscaping, you know, it will grow into the space, which will really be the accent piece here. What we want for you to pay attention to is nature. And so right now it seems a little bit bare when you pull back, but it is so much better than it being a shed for pool equipment that I don't use. I mean, you may not have learned how to pour an actual concrete table this round, but it is really cool to see what you can do with this space, no matter where it's located or what was on top of it originally. It's becoming really surreal that the property is coming together because when you turn around and you walk behind to the garden, you know, eventually what I'd like to do is like garden to table cooking here and make a little mini homestead. So the past couple episodes have been the start of creating my own desert homestead. And I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's episode. And thank you guys for your patience with me here. I'm excited to be back and really making moves on the property, you know, gearing up for the renovation January 1. So I will see you very soon for another DIY.